few months ago how a log4j vulnerability tripped into our development time and a lot of us went on patching our systems over and over again with new versions every day. Yesterday there was a new vulnerability which was found in the Spring framework which can impact more applications than we could have imagined using the log4j. Let's look at the agenda for this particular video. We are going to discuss what is this Spring vulnerability. We are going to see which all versions of Spring or Spring Boot which are getting affected. If you run a Spring Boot application as a jar, should you be worried? Or if you use Spring in your application, should you be worried? We will discuss that. Also, I'll show you the tactical fix which Spring has come up with, which you can use without upgrading your Spring Boot version, but you can still use that in your application. And strategically, we will see what new versions you need to upgrade to. Because so today Spring has released a new patch. I saw this vulnerability yesterday. However, there was no confirmation from the Spring team that uh, this is a vulnerability and there is a, a workaround or a patch which is there to fix our application. Now, today we have that new patch which is released and Spring also has released a blog for that. Also, finally, if you don't use Spring Boot application and if you use only Spring, you, should you be still worried, right? We will discuss all those in this particular video. Coming to the first, what is the Spring vulnerability? So there is this new vulnerability, which is this particular code. Every vulnerability, as you know, has a CEV number, and this is the number. The first number denotes the year, and then this is the number for this particular year, right? And this is the vulnerability which has come in uh, in the Spring framework. So what is this internal vulnerability thing? So Spring, I saw, I, I read the Spring blog. They have not mentioned in detail what is the issue. They have mentioned about the fixes and the impacts and stuff like that. But if you look at this, uh, website they have clearly mentioned what kind of issue it is right if you are using spring core which is the core for the spring framework so by default if you're using spring framework um, this this will you will be impacted if you're using spring boot if you're using dependency injection then you are impacted so if you're using art auto wire uh, to load your classes then definitely you will be impacted so what happens under the hood is spring core has a um, module which loads the classes for example uh, this is how it does right it tries to load classes during the startup time now if you are using tomcat 9 or a higher version there is a different um, version of the class loader right so the class loader obviously is the web app class loader base which is used in the tomcat 9 and the above versions now if you use this particular version an attacker can do a remote code execution by injecting some fake scripts within your uh, Tomcat application and he can execute it. For example, he can create a JSP file within your Spring Boot which is running as a Tomcat application or if let's say you're using Spring and then running that particular application as a web server within Tomcat, then you can get exploited. So the hacker can create a JSP file, inject some malicious code within the JSP file, execute those. So that's what the RCE stands for. RCE is nothing but remote code execution. Uh, this is the vulnerability uh, complexity from the sneak vulnerability DB. This is another uh, um, uh, stat using which you can identify what kind of vulnerability and how severity it is. Now, if you see this severity is 8.1, right? I don't know what does this number mean, but in general, obviously, uh, vulnerability is a vulnerability, right? Um, so it affects the spring beans, like, like you said. So if you see here, the spring beans is the jar which is getting affected. And if you upgrade the Spring Beans to 5.2.20 or 5.3.18, whichever version you're using, if you upgrade to the higher version, then you should be okay, right? That's what the fix is. But generally, who are all using these, right? I mean, there are a lot of applications which are using this Spring Beans under the hood, right? A classic example is Spring Boot, right? Spring Boot as a framework uses a hell lot of Spring Beans under the hood to inject and then load classes, right? So if you're using 2.5 version of Spring Boot um, or uh, other, right, you will have to upgrade to 2.5.12 version, right, which already has the Spring Beans uh, newer version embedded, right? This was released uh, today and you can get it. So if you see here, there is a blog post uh, denoting the availability of this 2.5.12 version of Spring Boot. Uh, parallelly, in the 2.6 version of uh, Spring, there is a 2.6.6 .6 patch, which is again available with the newer uh, vulnerability fix. So you can um, use that version. So if you're using Spring Boot, you can upgrade to uh, these versions. If you're using Spring 1, obviously you are outdated, right? Obviously, the Spring team is not checking the older versions for any vulnerabilities because there could be a lot of vulnerabilities as well, right? Because they are not actively scanning their applications. So definitely, if you're using older version of Spring Boot, right, you will have to upgrade. Right. So the affected version, if you ask me, is the versions 
which are not 2.512. So let's uh, see what is the impact here, right? Now, who is impacted? Uh, these are the impact uh, list which Spring has published. If you are using JDK 9 version and if you're running Apache Tomcat as a servlet container and also you're packaging your application as a var, so generally Spring Boot executes uh, a jar file and then some people, if they want to deploy the Spring Boot application in a Tomcat, then they deploy it as a var file, right? So in that case, they package it as a var, right? Then you could be impacted. Um, but uh, listen to the whole thing because there is a clause here. Uh, if you're using Spring Web, Web MVC or the Spring Web Flux, if you're using any sort of uh, exposure via APIs, then you are um, impacted. Also, if you're using Spring versions 5.3 to 5.17 and 5.2 to 5.2.19, then you are impacted, right? And any version which is older than this is also impacted. So that's what uh, it mentions here. Right? I mean, um, ideally, anything which is older than the 5.3.18 um, uh, and 5.2.20, everything is like impacted, right? Um, however, Spring also mentions that the nature of vulnerability is more general and there may be other ways to exploit it that have not been reported yet. So basically what they're saying is there could be other ways, the older versions of the applications or some other um, uh, setup could be exploited. For example, if let's say you're running your application as a jar, there could even be a different way to exploit, right? But nobody has reported it yet. That's why Spring is not exposing it. However, they suggest you to upgrade to the latest version. That's that's what they say. If let's say um, you have a, a version, so obviously the next uh, uh, topic for discussion is, um, I run a Spring Boot application as a jar, should I be worried, right? Now, this is your answer. So Spring says that obviously you should not be worried, but it is better to upgrade your application to the latest version because there is a vulnerability fix and there is a vulnerability in general, which is creeping up within the framework. So you will have to upgrade your application to Spring Boot 2.5.12 and 2.6.6, right? So that's the suggestion from the uh, Spring team. Now coming to the tactical fix. Right now, I don't want to upgrade the Spring Boot version because I will have to test a lot of things. But now I want to tactically fix it. Right? How can I do that? So that's where this workarounds uh, come into picture. Right? If you're using the older versions of Spring, so this is what Spring says. So you can use something called controller advice, which will go and intercept all your requests, and then it will add some filtering into it. For example, here we have this class called binder controller advice, which we are creating. Now, if let's say you don't want to upgrade your version of Spring Boot, you can add this particular class. So what this does is any uh, class, right, when, whenever the class gets loaded, it identifies what are the classes which it needs to allow and what are the things which it, it should not allow, right? So here what we are doing is it is disallowing. For example, it says set disallowed field and then it's adding a deny list. So it's adding a deny list of all the classes, right? Anything which has a class dot, whatever, right? I mean, class dot star. So anything which has class uh, in between, right? It's not the dot class if you look at it. It's the star dot class. This generally works for most of the application. But however, let's say somebody has set this uh, property using a different method. For example, if there is an init binder and then you have overwritten this uh, disallowed fields property, then you cannot change it, right? Uh, obviously, just check um, if you're already using this uh, disallowed property, then you won't be able to override it, right? So you will have to check if somebody is overriding it outside the application. If not, then you can use this particular workaround. There is one more fail safe way of doing it within the um, Spring Boot application. So this is the uh, way, right? If you're using a Spring Web uh, Flux or a Spring MVC registration application, then you can use this kind of a setup. So if you see here, when you load your uh, Spring Boot application, right? So there is this request mapping handler adapter. You can override the uh, request mapping adapter with your own uh, adapter, and then you can override the init binder method, and then you can set that uh, during the startup. So this is like a classic uh, um, Spring Boot override, which we do, right? So there is a way for us to now override the uh, class loading bit of disallowing the fields. It will not use the files which are having class um, somewhere in the front or in the back, right, to get loaded. So that's what happens here. In case, let's say you are not using a Spring Boot application, but you are using a Spring MVC application, right? So Spring MVC is the older version of Spring Boot, right? We used to call it Spring REST. Um, or Spring MVC, right? In that case, instead of using the at uh, web MVC, right, you can use the delegating MVC configuration, right? And you can use the overriding option to override that particular adapter. So you, you don't have to like worry about using this. Now, let me open this particular file. So if you see here, you can add a configuration, right? You can create a new delegate web configuration and you can override this 
whole uh, thing which we did here right you can hand have the uh, request mapping handler overridden even in the spring mvc by creating a configuration and overriding it so that's another way of doing it in the spring mvc application so though these are three different uh, ways in which you can um, tactically fix your application to remediate from this particular vulnerability now coming to the next thing what is the strategical fix obviously we just saw uh, we can upgrade to uh, these two versions of spring boot right or you can upgrade uh, to spring framework right obviously there is new uh, version of spring framework which is 5.3.18 which is used internally in the spring boot 2.6.6 and others right um, again you have a 5.2.20 right these are the major frameworks which have the fixes right under the hood spring framework um, has fixed that inside the spring beans so if you see um, this is the this is the place where we have to right if let's say you are not even able to upgrade uh, stuff you can you can just upgrade spring beans in general right if you want to just tactically fix it i don't know how much it will affect the other uh, versions and how um, how much versions you are lagging behind but generally i would advise to upgrade to a latest version of spring framework rather than just upgrading the spring beans right so that's the strategic fix now finally i don't use a spring boot application but still i should i be worried i just covered that in the bit where i just mentioned um if you're using um spring boot as a war right again uh, or if you're using a spring mvc application then you will be obviously affected but you can override uh, by using these tactical fixes right however let's say imagine that you are not using spring boot to expose your application but you're using spring framework in that case obviously you will have to look at the way you're exposing your application if you're exposing it via a different way then obviously it may not be exploited because uh, you're not using tomcat right if you're using tomcat and if you're using uh, spring framework and you're exposing your application then obviously you could be impacted right depending on the version of the jdk if you're using jdk plus 9 plus or if you're using the apache tomcat as a servlet container then you could be impacted so it's better to upgrade to the latest versions um, of the framework the spring framework right if you're using spring framework if you're not using any of the spring frameworks then i think you should not be worried about this particular vulnerability i will leave the links for all these um, blogs and the discussions which i have uh, been showing in this particular video you can take that from the description below as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much